That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Red Notice, the sixth film directed by Ross and Marshall Thurber, which is a new classic for Insomniacs that Netflix released theatrically November 5th, 2021, and will be available to stream November 12th. What does that mean? A classic for Insomniacs? It puts you to sleep. Oh. Oh, it's, it's comedy hour. Uh, what else has Ross and Fossum Thurston done? Ross and Marshall Thurber. Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> <laughs> who wrote and directed this 160 million budgeted film. Can we start <sighs> here? Let's you actually are quite familiar with his filmography. Oh, go ahead. Well, his debut was Dodgeball, an underdog story. I don't uh, recall that one with Ben Stiller. You, you, I keep that. confusing that with Mr. Woodcock. No. No, yeah. no, no, no. Uh, he then directed, uh, and I remember seeing this at the Lagoon in Minneapolis, an adaptation of a Michael Chabon novel called The Mysteries of Pittsburgh, which I really did not like. He also did We're the Millers, which you did see with me. With, with Jennifer Anna Stone. Which had some funny moments to it. I recall thinking uh, it was funny. Central Intelligence, starring Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart, which I also remember liking moments in that. Is that where Dwayne Johnson's character is like a nerd in high school? With and, the fanny pack and the... And he was overweight. And overweight. Yes. yes, I recall liking them. And Skyscraper, also starring Dwayne Johnson. And Nev Campbell, which we saw together as well. I recall thinking that was good enough for what it is. Sure. And now here we are with Red Notice, which, uh, as the film explains right away, and then doesn't really reference again until the very end, uh, is... With a stamp. With a, with a, <laughs> which technically, that doesn't make any sense, because two of them must already have a Red Notice, uh, is what Interpol... Uh, Marks is their highest alert for the most wanted criminals, basically. Yeah, the highest, like arrest warrant. Yes. 165 million, where'd all the money go? I don't understand. 160, okay. Um, yeah, this is a no for me. And I really like Ryan Reynolds. You know, he follows us on Instagram. I do um, appreciate most of his work, uh, as, as well as Dwayne Johnson and Gal Gadot. Like, they're all three likable leads. You know you're in trouble with the poster, which looks almost exactly like the 2012 movie This Means War, starring Reese Witherspoon, Tom Hardy, and Chris Pine. Just the oh. way they're positioned and how smug everyone looks. Uh, it, it, you know, comedies are hard. There are some great... Com- well, no. Comedy... In, in, with running time, I think. And, you know, this is, an, as Netflix tells us, an action, irreverent uh, comedy. But, uh, you know, at two hours, that's, that's stretching it just a little bit. It felt long. Okay. Let's, the basic story is Ryan Reynolds plays an art thief. And he likes to say he's like the number one art thief. Nolan Booth. Okay. Mm-hmm. Th- there is a billionaire who has a daughter named Cleopatra. And she's getting married for the first time. And her dad, this billionaire, wants to gift her these three golden like Fabergé eggs that Cleopatra was gifted uh, by Mark Antony Mark Antony and it has to be all three and they're hidden everywhere so uh, Ryan Reynolds we see in the beginning attempting to steal one of them out of a museum in Rome when Interpol agents show up with Dwayne Johnson's character in tow and we're told that he is like some sort of like forensic psychologist who specializes in like profiling art thieves which was so stupid so he shows up and immediately there's like a chase between him and ryan reynolds character they end up getting arrested because there's a lot of double crossing in this movie like ad nauseum but we are then made to understand that dwayne johnson's character is lying about being a federal agent. So he gets thrown into some Russian prison with Ryan Reynolds. Well, at first we're told he's framed for lying about it by uh, Inspector Dawes with Interpol, who <sighs> shows up every now and then to be thwarted. But then Gal Gadot pops up. And we f- the bishop. That's the bishop. Name. And we find out she is like also the number one art thief, and she is also trying to get these Fabergé eggs because this billionaire is offering $300 million for these three eggs. So she was sort of playing Ryan Reynolds' character, like sort of following him to see where he's going to get the egg and steal it from him. To wrap it up, the billionaire does get his hands on the three eggs. We're skipping over a lot here. We are. 
We also find out that Dwayne Johnson's character is really not a federal agent, even though Gal Gadot's character is explaining that she set him up so that they would think he's not. So it's like a double, double, double cross. But Dwayne Johnson and Gal Gadot's characters are in cahoot. They're like in a relationship. And they are both conspiring to sell these three eggs. And they did. So they get their $300 million. They they screw over the Egyptian billionaire, turn him in. Turn him in. And then Ryan Reynolds, we we, we presume, is, um, you know... They chain him to a tree in the jungle. But the end of the film is... We see Gal Gadot and Dwayne Johnson on some yacht, like just living their best lives. When Ryan Reynolds pops up out of nowhere and says, "Oh, hey, y'all! Funny seeing y'all here. Um, just so you know, that three hundred million dollars you got, um, I wire transferred that money to like the feds. So sorry about it." And that's the end of the film, basically. Mm-hmm. He 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 then proposes like they go on another mission or whatever heist. Because I guess they work so well together. That made no sense to me. But that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I did not care for this movie at all. I I don't think I laughed once. I did chuckle at a couple of moments with Gal Gadot. But they were very light chuckles. Uh, but it, it the script by Thurber is... R- it's terrible because n- none of the lines are funny and you can tell they're relying like exclusively on the charm of what these three people tend to have be branded for delivering. They're just doing what they do and don't yes. and aren't being very well directed at it. No, and like you were saying throughout the film, it feels so familiar. It's very derivative. Very derivative. To the point where uh, What's that meme with that lady uh, looking confused and there's all the math problems? Oh, that Spanish language soap opera <laughs> yeah. actor in, in prison or something. I'm like, like I'm sitting here taking notes, like that's an Indiana Jones reference, and and sev- across like all three Indiana Jones films, or the first three at least, I'm like, this is an Indiana Jones ripoff for sure. And then uh, at at one point, uh, Ryan Reynolds starts humming the Raiders theme, and it's like that doesn't forgive you for it. There's also a tango sweet sequence that is very True Lies. Uh, and I guess they're trying to transport this odd couple distraction between Reynolds and Dwayne Johnson, but not even that works very well, strangely. When Dwayne Johnson and uh, Ryan Reynolds are in prison, Ryan Reynolds is attempting to get Dwayne beat up by telling all the prisoners that he's a cop. But, so that, I thought that scene was annoying, but... <laughs> Because and they, when, they both when, get, when they first get into their cell, they're like bunk beds, and Ryan Reynolds' character says, "Oh, are you a top or a bottom?" Oh, it doesn't matter. Prison's going to decide for us. And I just thought, normally jokes like that would, like I would think, are funny, and it just felt so like forced. Everything felt real stale. Uh, it, but also even how they ended up both in this, because Inspector Das, uh, played by Rita Arya, is like, I'm going to send you to the worst place in the world, it's Russia, and you got them in the same cell. Oh, and I didn't like her or her character. I mean, I don't know that lady, but I did not like that character. Um, then when they when the Rock and Ryan Reynolds break out of that prison, of course it goes like unbelievably smoothly. But there's a point where Ryan, like they get to the wall of the prison. And it would, and then of course we're like, oh, they're stuck. And then Ryan Reynolds' character pulls like a rock from the wall, like rock Jenga, and that, the wall collapses. That was bad. As well as there's a scene, a CGI scene with a bull uh, that is particularly. That's my next note. The reason I think this movie looks so cheap is I feel like eighty percent of it looks like it was done in front of green screen, mm-hmm. and the CGI is not good. In particular, that bull scene. They're in like a an arena or a coliseum, and there's like a bull chasing them. And then you have like the spectators in the seats. That shit looks so fake. It looked really bad. And I, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, the thing about Spielberg, who I think Thurber was very much aware of what he's doing here, uh, has a reverence for the MacGuffins in all of those movies, which I don't get that at all for even Cleopatra's eggs. Like we scroll through that in the very, very beginning, but there's really no sense of mystery. And they're used to kind of predicate all this. Uh, international bouncing around because the first one's in a museum, the second one's uh, in this rich playboy named uh, Soto Voce's uh, private collection, and the third one is hidden away in this Nazi bunker, a la you know what happens to the Ark of the Covenant. 
there, there's just no sense of uh, inspiration to any of it. There's also a scene where, because we get history on Reynolds and Johnson's dads, the, like their characters' dads, and then we sort of see that like, which, like the meaning behind it is lost when we find out that both of them are bad guys. Because The Rock is like a cop. He's supposed to be a cop. And he's like, yeah, my dad was a crook. And that's what made me want to be a cop. And then Ryan Reynolds says his dad was like a was a cop. And that's what made him want to be a crook. So it, it, I guess it was supposed to be a poignant moment, which it doesn't work. And then we find out that The Rock is not a good guy. <laughs> it's a twist too far, my friends. Uh, it's, you know, think of the end of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels with Steve Martin and Michael Caine trying to put one over on Glenn Headley, only to find out that she's been putting one over on them the whole time. You know, that, that is a, a beautiful moment, comedic mm-hmm. moment, and at the end of a really great film. The other thing is, anytime these movies have, like, so this billionaire is going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on these stolen eggs that like the, the global art community is looking for. It makes no sense to me because how is he going to... He just, like, how is this girl... Like, what is she going to do? Lock them up in like a safe somewhere forever? You, you take one look at that girl and you know that she's going to be putting that on Instagram. So, you know... The, the, you know what I think? Because I'm done. What sums up this movie perfectly is at the wedding. First of all, this girl, the, the, the daughter Cleopatra, looks so basic. And she's just sitting there looking like a rubber chicken. And when her dad presents to her these golden eggs she's kind of like oh great wow and then we see Ed Sheeran singing to them and then she's so excited like she runs right past the eggs and then gets all excited for Ed Sheeran and I feel like that's that's how I feel about this movie the way this girl acted about those eggs the Ed like who cares the Ed Sheeran moment was really unnecessary as well because they give him a moment where he's like I'm Ed Sheeran bitch it's like oh. Who cares? This I mean, is, he's all right, but like, it just didn't work. Yet nothing, nothing comes together at all. And there's some even repeated jokes. I forget what Ryan Reynolds keeps saying that something about the worst place in the world is Inspector Dawes' Instagram account. That line is used twice out of all things. Paired with, it's clear that Thurber knows cinematic references. There's a there's a reference to Preston Sturge's Sullivan's Travels in there. Like it, it's just so bizarre at how badly it fails. I could be done. Okay. What would you give it? I'd give it a 0.5 out of oh. 5. It's not good. It's, it, and I didn't see this, but you know, it, what kind of an impact is this going to have? Like that Chris, uh, which Chris movie did Extraction? Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth. The Chris Hemsworth movie. Now there's going to be several many, several, many of those because of how many views they got. No cultural impact whatsoever. I didn't see Michael Bay's Six Underground a Netflix film that also has, I think, similar elements to this Ryan Reynolds film. Also I do him. think the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard's Man Husband movie was funnier. I was much more entertained with that. I did laugh at that movie, but this one, I just didn't think any of it was funny. I so I would give it one out of five. Okay. But because I like Ryan Reynolds, I can't give it 0.5, but okay. he is fun to watch. And we do see him without a shirt on, and we haven't seen him without a shirt on in quite some time. I haven't kept that close attention to uh, how often we've seen his naked torso. No, I'm not, but I'm just saying, it it, it just seems like he he doesn't seem in recent years to show off his body in that way, so it just, it's interesting that he chose this film to have us see him in a shower scene. Like, well, he's competing with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. But, you know, he's not a piece of meat. He shouldn't have to when he doesn't want to. Are you done? Um, uh, yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye.